We begin Introduction to Multimedia, Chapter 1. This uh, chapter is organized into three subsections. The three sections are the following. What is multimedia? Then we will take a brief look at multimedia data and then multimedia past, present and future. What is multimedia? Multimedia is the field concerned with computer controlled integration of all the following text, graphics, drawings, still and moving images, animation, audio, etc. So they are represented here around a user in a digital environment where each type of the information can be digitally represented, stored, transmitted, and processed. Add to this text, graphics, audio, video, animation, there is an additional element which is interactivity. So user normally can deal with interactive multimedia. He can communicate with the multimedia he is using. Some definitions. Multimedia application. A multimedia application is an application, a software, a program that uses a collection of multiple media sources. So to be a multimedia application, he must it, this application must use more than one uh, media source uh, text, graphic, image, sound, audio, animation, and or video. Definition of hypertext, a text containing links to other texts. And this term was first introduced by Ted Nelson in 1965. What is a hypermedia? A hypermedia is not only a text that contains links, it contains other than text. It is a collection of medias with links. So an example is PowerPoint, is the web, or Adobe Acrobat, or any other video with hyperlinks. Example of multimedia applications. Multimedia systems. A multimedia system is the system the hardware plus the software on which we can uh, work with multimedia applications. Okay, so it is a system capable of processing multimedia data and applications. The system is characterized by processing, storage, generation, manipulation, and rendering of multimedia information. Four basic characteristics. The system is computer controlled. We cannot talk about a multimedia system uh, without that. This system can be computer controlled. It is integrated, so they are related to each other, the devices. It's not, we cannot say a system where we can have a microphone from one side and not connected to the computer. Okay, it must be an integrated system, information represented digitally on this computer, and the system must have an interactive interface. What are the, the components of a multimedia system? It consists of capture devices, which captures the data, the media, whatever this media is, visual, audio, text. So there are devices, different devices to capture different medias devices to be able to store the captured media to communicate through the network and uh, it must have computer systems so multimedia desktop machines workstations mpeg hardware and uh, this system must also like have it has inputs it ha it has to have um, uh, outputs so we have to have uh, display devices like CD quality speakers, HDTV, screens, SGVA, high resolution monitors, color printers. So every device that transmits the media from the system to the user is called display device. Every device that transmits the media from the outside to the system okay, is called capture device. So what are the challenges for multimedia system? What, how a multimedia system must be? It must have distributed networks. This is a challenge. And temporal relationship between data is another challenge. What do we mean by temporal relationship 
between data, the system must be able to ensure this temporal relationship between the data, whether it is between the same data, the same uh, media itself within the media, or between different media, intermedias we call them. A system must be able to render different data at the same time, so it must be able to show you a picture and to um, to output a sound at the same time, not one after the other, and it must ensure the sequencing within the media, so you cannot watch the video in reverse order, you must watch this, the video in a given order, so the playing to play the frames in the correct order, and uh, uh, each frame at its correct time where it is supposed to be. You don't want to see a um, corrupted video, even without sound, and ensure the synchronization intermedia scheduling. Uh, an obvious example to make you understand directly what I mean is the video and audio synchronization. You want, if you are watching a video, it is sure you want to hear what the actor is saying while he is um, moving his lips. You don't want um, asynchronous um, uh, content. We want every system to be complete, but especially for a multimedia system, we want a very high processing power to deal with large data. Why large data? Because they are multimedia data. It's unlike textual data. They take so little uh, space. Um, we want a real-time delivery of media, a special hardware commonplace. We want the file system to be multimedia capable. So we want this file system to be able to deliver in real time the media. So if you want to open a video and read this video stream, we want this file system capable of real time transmitting or real time streaming. We want efficient input high, uh, output, even if the file system is uh, rapid, even if the operating system is rapid, if the screen is not uh, able to receive this streaming, so the screen will be slow, the screen will be slow. So we want also an input output that is efficient. We want a special operating system, I said, to deal with the file system and the processing that are powerful. We also want the storage and the memory to be large enough with large caches and high-speed buses. We need uh, network support inside this multimedia system. And, um, and we need to choose the correct file formats to represent the data to be stored in this large storage. Because even with large storage, if we choose wrong file format, this will lead to saturation of the storage quickly. And above all, above all these powerful devices that are a part of the multimedia system, we need a good software tool that will be user friendly, that will help us to design and develop. So the reasons of expansion of multimedia systems are that multimedia started to change our ways of communication with the ability and the availability of low-cost capture device. Everyone has a camera that has a, vi a video camera in his smartphone rendering device. And on your smartphone, you have everyone have a video editor and smarter software to create content and uh, the large and less expensive storage devices along within research and better compression of media content. And another point is the technological advances in digital network and standardization of distribution protocol. With the devices to capture, with the devices and the softwares to store, which are now not too much expensive, and with the protocols to uh, uh, to share on digital network and all those becoming easier and most, uh, more available the expansion of multimedia system is here so what are the processes in a multimedia system the processes 
the processes in multimedia system starting from these three points that we mentioned above um, three processes in multimedia system we have the multimedia content creation or what we say what we call multimedia authoring and after the content creation we have the storage and compression of course because we don't want to store raw data it takes too much volume and then we have the distribution and all of this is represented in this schema you can create the content you then have devices and softwares along devices and software to help you compress and encode your media and once you have your media within the correct file format you can transmit this media you can distribute this media uh, to different destinations next section is the second section of this chapter which is a brief look at multimedia data